frightening. Like, <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time you saw it with an audience? Uh, probably when it came out. Uh, we had a, a, a sneak preview in, in Westwood, and uh, we got to the, the, the screening, and there was a line around the block, and nobody could believe it because when we had uh, the first screening of the film on the lot at 20th Century Fox, uh, figured we were never going to work again and then <laughs> somehow the word got out and we got there and there was a line around the block and um, I mean we tore the roof off this place and, and when the lights came up I was sitting next to my father John Carity and I said what do you think dad and he said well it was Shakespeare's <laughs> how are you surprised at how well I mean it's in the 80s, it was such a, a, a unique thing for, because in the jocks were the cool guys. And now we've completely done a 180 where the nerds are the cool guys. So I think that this movie's seen differently now. Do you, what do you think about that? Well, I think, you know, uh, Bill Gates clearly indicated that <laughs> the nerds rule. Uh, you know, we occasionally get together, my castmates and I, and uh, we still talk about, you know, dusting these guys off and, you know, like maybe uh, the nerds go to Washington. <laughs> but then we realize that's been done, so. <laughs> How did you get involved in the project? Um, one of the first things you had to do to get to uh, second base, so to speak, was to turn it down. So. Uh, the, the director, Jeff Cadu, he, he knew that the, the film was marginal at best, and anybody that came in for the interview that said they loved it, he knew they were lying, so they were out. <laughs> uh, Jeff and I kind of hated each other on sight, and I thought that was that. And then uh, they started you know, working on my agent to get me to come in and audition. And I thought, well, if you guys want me to come in that bad, why don't you just offer it to me? And they said, no, no, you gotta come in. And I thought, okay. Mel Gibson wouldn't do it, but what the heck, I'm an actor, I'm going to go for it. So I went out and I got my hair cut, uh, regular boy's haircut, and um, I went to an optometrist in Sherman Oaks, and I'm looking at all these frames, and they're, you know, like 150, 200 bucks, it's 1983, so you know, it's a lot of money. And uh, I'm really getting bummed out to get a pair of glasses, and the optometrist comes out and he says, uh, can I help you? And I go, well, not, not at these prices. He goes, well, what are you looking for? And I said, well, I'm looking for something where, you know, I could look kind of like a nerd. He said, oh, a nerd? I said, hey, come on, man, you know? He said, no, no, it's okay, I, I know what you're looking for, hold on. And he went in the back of the uh, shop and he pulled out a shoebox and he, he dusted off the cover and he pulled out the glasses that I actually wore in the movie. And when I went on the audition, um, I'm punctual, and they kept coming out in the outer office looking for me, and they didn't see me, and they kept going back in and coming out, and finally, after about the third go-around, they realized it was me. So, I knew that I had to do the complete transformation to get the gig, and I did the complete transformation and got the gig. I still have the glasses, and I still have the nerd pack. <laughs> Awesome. How was the filming? Did you guys, as a group, the Lambdas, did you really bond? As I mean, obviously, if you're still hanging out, yeah? Yeah, I mean, um, the first day was the day uh, where we got the cruise control locked at 35, uh, 6,721 and a quarter boots, that whole scene. And uh, the next day, they had the dailies. And back in the good old days of making movies, the, the whole company would get together and watch the raw footage from the day before. It's called dailies, but you guys are all film geeks, so you know that. And I wouldn't go in because I wasn't willing to see what I looked like on film as Lewis. I was completely freaked out, and I figured, you know, judging by the faces of the guys when they came out of the dailies would determine if uh, I would ever work again. <laughs> Maybe the next day. And they came out one at a time, you know, and they, they, they come up to me and they go, Oh wow, we get it, man. I go, what? He goes, you're, you're doing it real. And I went, yeah, it's got to be real. And they go, yeah, yeah, that's cool, man. We've got to be totally real. <laughs> and that was sort of the mandate that we had to be real, that these guys had no idea that they were nerds. That's the only way it worked. It would work. And that was sort of our, our mandate uh, throughout the film. That's awesome. Yeah. Shall we take some questions for the audience? Sure, fire away. Who's got a question? Yes. There's an urban legend that there was a ton of partying on set 
I don't remember. <laughs> it was true. <laughs> <laughs> um, which college campus was it that you uh, shot on? Because what I've read is that you <coughs> lived on campus for about a week and you you applied to the fraternities that were there and they Well, I'll, I'll help you out. I know the story. And that, <laughs> that's what you knew, that you were right for the part. <laughs> well, um, we shot at the University of Arizona, and uh, the reason the remake never got made is those idiots gave that school the actual script. Uh, when we went to U of A, we gave them a toned-down version of the script, and we got permission to shoot, and then we dusted off the, the movie that you saw. But uh, I knew that living in the Hollywood Hills, riding motorcycles, and uh, basically being uh, one of the Carradines, uh, there was no way I could prepare for Lewis, uh, and I convinced the studio to send me the location two weeks early, and I only brought my wardrobe, and I already had the haircut, I already had the glasses, and I got to Tucson, uh, I was so embarrassed I wouldn't leave the hotel room for three days, I lived on, <laughs> on room service, and I was building a model airplane, a remote control model airplane, and I thought, you know, that'll get me into character for building the robot, and I got pretty far along, and I realized that I, I needed a part made, and I called the shop teacher at the U of A, and the guy said, yeah, come on over, tell me what you need, I'll make it for you. So, you know, I very reluctantly got dressed as Lewis, and I ventured out of the hotel room, and to my utter astonishment, nobody reacted. I couldn't believe it. They didn't know that I felt like a geek. They just looked at this guy dressed like an engineering student or something, and I got to the U of A, and the shop teacher was dressed just like me. <laughs> so, the next week, Anthony Edwards shows up, and I convince him that we should go rush all the fraternities. <laughs> well, the word was out that the nerds were being shot there, and pretty much everybody, you know, knew it, and they thought it was cool, except one fraternity. The guy at the door said, you know what, I don't think Biff knows. Come on, come on. <laughs> so he takes us into the inner sanctum of the fraternity. I swear to you, Biff is sitting there with the pith helmet, you know, the two beers up there, and the tubes are coming out, and he's bopping along and just, you know, being, you know, Joe Bob Jock. And uh, the guy says, hey, Biff, these guys want to rush. And he went, no way! <laughs> that's, that's when I knew that we had the characters down. <laughs> Was that your idea, or was that in the script? And how long did it take you to kind of nail that? Well, it, it was in the script. Um, I didn't come up with the laugh. Jamie Cromwell came up with the laugh. <laughs> and the night before shooting, I still didn't have the laugh. And the next day, it had to work. And I was a little freaked out. And I told the director, hey, man, I still haven't figured out what the, it was in the script, it was a honking laugh. <laughs> you know, how do you do that? And uh, he said, well, here, come here, man. Look, look at uh, Jamie Cromwell's audition tape. And I looked at the tape, and he's doing the laugh. And I met him, and I said, man, that is really fucked up. <laughs> you poor bastard. I can't believe you laugh like that. And he said, no, that's not how I laugh. I came up with that for the character. I said, oh, really? It's, you designed it? And he said, yeah. I said, oh, shit, how do you do it? And he taught me how to do it. And then the next day, we had the cruise control locked on 35, and, and you have the stereo honking laugh, and uh, that was nerd history, man. Yeah, it was. <laughs> How much improvisation was there? Um, not a lot, actually. You know, um, I know that the line that Takashi came up with when he said, oh, solid, you know, that was an ad lib. Uh, we love you when you're mad, that was an ad lib. Uh, it was not in the script that Lewis uh, would have the type of sex that he had with Betty. <laughs> that was my idea. <laughs> everything, else, uh, everything else is in the script. Anybody have any other questions? Did yeah. You, did you know anything about like the redux that they were going to do that Fox and Tyler had going of just the Revenge of the Nerds, kind of like the 
Yeah, yeah. Been... yeah I, I had re I read the script for the the redo, and I saw all the outrage on the internet. Uh, you know, from folks like yourself that were like, "Man, don't you dare do a remake of Revenge of the Nerds!" <laughs> but uh, the script is actually pretty good, and um, oh well. <laughs> Is it actually? Are they actually doing it? No, it, it, it started and it stopped. Good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Phil. Could you compare working on this first movie to the sequel? Yeah. Um, there's no comparison. <laughs> I do know that. Uh, I don't know this for sure. I'd have to go to IMDb. It's probably there, but for a long time. Revenge of the Nerds 2 is not on Joe Roth's resume, the director. Uh, I also know that Thomas Newman, uh, the guy that did the score for the first one, uh, seems to for leave that off his list. I think it's a great score. <laughs> I mean, it's so weird, man. Everybody is still embarrassed about being nerds. It's cool. I'm not embarrassed. <laughs> right on. I'm a nerd, and I'm not afraid to say. <laughs> We got time for one last question. In the back. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, how long did it take to shoot the entire film? Eight weeks. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a great experience, and um, I'm really glad that uh, so many of you came out to see the epic. And uh, <laughs> rock on. <laughs>